Well, as I said in my comments earlier, we live in a bizarre risk-averse world powered by the gotcha moment. Before social media gave everyone above the age of 10 the power to publish, uh, there was a judgment applied by journalists and editors about the community interest in publishing certain stories. There were things we never knew because in many ways, well, we just didn't need to know. Uh, there is now a crisis gripping the risk-averse world of corporates and political parties. And mobile technologies can record and video any of us anytime, anywhere. Lisa Goddard, well, we know her on this, this channel. She's an experienced journalist. But for a decade, through her company at Only Media, she's helped corporations with crisis communications. Lisa, great to see you and Happy Thanks New Year. Yes, thank you. So, so how does this work? Does an ounce of prevention actually... Uh, fix this problem? Well, it's sort of a predictable hazard of public life, isn't it? So all of the politicians know that. And sadly, I think what we're going to see more and more of is this sanitised version of a politician yeah. coming through because they really can't afford for it to be any different. So on one hand, that really worries me about the type of politician we'll end up having, making the decisions for this land. But on the other side, if you are in politics now or in public life or even in a high-profile position, you really need to do a, a solid look at what is in your past and what can come out? Because those skeletons, as you know, Gary, they do come out. OK, so Premier Perrottet, you know, he's, he admitted there was a rumour going round, some are now saying the rumour mm. had no basis. So he's outed himself about this Nazi uniform at a 21st birthday. Can he actually get ahead of this thing? Do we, we, we just leave this in the ditch and move on? Well, look, I think you know, if you're talking about crisis communication, it's acknowledge, it's take action and then update. So you could only imagine the conversations that were being held in those back rooms between, I think it was the 2nd of January that they were first aware of it, mm -hmm. to when he finally went out and did the mea culpa on the 13th of January. So they very much had to face the fact that if this information is going to get out there, we are far better off trying to be ahead of it and apologising for it than seeing it splashed across the Daily Telly or the SMH. You know, when I was involved in day-to-day -day politics, the rule was... If you spend your whole time talking about that, yep. they're going to mark you down. Mistakes can be made. Humans do things. And Perrottet's trying to get on with his job. Yep. So I suppose he's trying to do that. I mean, just the other day, for instance, uh, Bob Carr, the former Premier, mm -hmm. long-serving Premier, accused Perrottet of being unelectable because there's an election coming in a couple of months. And Perrottet today, of course, hit back. Uh, yep. Perrottet has said that... Uh, in fact, Bob Carr is responsible for the influx of poker machines across Sydney. So he's trying to change the subject, pivot, as they say. He's trying to push through his cashless gaming reform before the March election. He's obviously trying to deflect attention. Does that work? Well, it does work, and it's one of the oldest tricks in the book, and you know that from all of your years in, in media and, and po politics, and politics right? yeah, So, yeah, yeah, don't look over here, look over here instead. Yeah, yeah. And he has absolutely tried to do that today. But I think the big mistake he's made is that by engaging on the Bob Carr comments, all he's done is put more oxygen into that. So, again, we're seeing that. I looked at the, the front pages online of a few of the big mastheads, and that's what's on front and centre. So we're talking four days now into what is a scandal or a crisis for Perrottet, and it's still getting airplay. OK, so if you were, say, 12 or 15 and active on social media and thought, you know, which one they day... Are, which they oh, are. Yeah, I'd like to be Prime Minister of Australia today. Yeah. Do you think maybe there's a few things you've got to deal with? I mean, I mean how can you actually manage every aspect of your life to pass what we used to call in Canberra the Daily Telegraph test. You know, what would this look like on the front page? Well, look, I had a very robust conversation with, with Gemma Tognini on a program here yeah. on, on Thursday night. And her argument was, look, I had bad hair and a, and a, and a bad f formal dress when I was at Year 12, and that shouldn't be held against me. Hmm. I don't think that kind of argument holds water because there are things that you, we all do when we're young, and that's fair enough. But wearing a Nazi costume, you can't tell me you can go through high school... You can go you know, into, into the first year university and not know that that will be offensive to somebody. And I guess what worries me is this has to raise some questions about the pre-selection within the Liberal Party. Mm. Was this disclosed? And I know that is it the head of the Shooter and Fishers yeah, is yeah. asking that very same question. How much was known and did he declare it? Because he has indicated that it's, it's hung around and he's been concerned about it for quite some time. So. But is this, is this a, what they call an inside-the-beltway thing? You worked as a foreign correspondent in the yeah. United States. You know, in other words, is it just a political media thing? Do people really think our oh, Perrottet is unelectable because he was stupid when he was 21? I don't know if they think he's unelectable. Certainly if you read the comments like we do on social media, there are some... It's, it's very split. There are people who are... Look, the guy was young, everyone makes mistakes, move on. Move on. And then there's a very, very angry set of people out there who are saying, no, this is unforgivable. 
and he shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. And the question is if he will end up leading the party to find out at the election if there is a voter backlash, because we all know that there's massive infighting within that Liberal Party. Well, uh, yeah, and I think that's the point. You, you, you mentioned before about how you unpack a crisis to try and get ahead of it. Uh, the news cycles, keeping this going, finding that new angle. I mean, here we are talking about it as yeah. well. Um, changing the subject, moving the story on, that's going to be very hard to do. Well, he's certainly tried that and he's going for... So he talked about the stamp duty today. That was his big announcement. But again, he had copped questions at the press conference about the Nazi costume. Uh, you know, he's tried talking about and pushing hard this, this poker machine uh, reform. And, of course, you've got the Labor... Um, Chris Minns is out there doing the same thing, but it's still not moving the dial. So I'm not sure there would be a lot of discussions being held behind closed doors as to what do we throw up next to move this on. Well, Matt Keane said he forgives, let's move on. Yeah. He kept it going himself I think today. if I was Perite and I had Matt Keane beside me saying, no, no, you've got the full party room support and I'm behind you, you're the leader... I think he should be, you know, perhaps a bit... Concerned. Well, that's the old yes minister line. You, yeah. You've got to get behind him to stab him in the back, so to speak. I um, did note, though, and I'll agree with Albanese on one thing today. He said, and quote, I think there's a few young people who will regret the invention of cameras on phones in future years. Yes. And I think that bells the cat. That's where the real problem is. And, look, when we're inside the big corporates, that's one of the key messages. What are you putting out there? What are your people putting out there on social media? Because there is a lot of damage that can be done by a, a throwaway remark. I don't want you to disclose anything you've done professionally uh, uh, for others, but what's the best and the worst kind of examples of these things you've seen or heard? The very best crisis communication is when it never makes the media. When you get the call and you can spend three, four months because you know that there's something bubbling away mm. and it never makes the headlines, that's successful crisis communication. Uh, you look at something like Optus, I think they did a, a dreadful job in having quality spokespeople out there. Uh, if you listen to a few of those early interviews, they were train wrecks. Yeah, and, so, and you really can't ignore it. That's the point, no. though. You have to deal with it a and you have for, to look like you're getting on with your job. A tick for Parate, he went out there and he stood up and said, you know, it was the wrong thing to do. But how long is this going to go on for now for him? Well, possibly from his point of view, it's gone on far yep. too long. Oh, it's good to see you, Lisa. Thanks so much I'll for joining us. I'll see you on Friday night soon. OK, good on you.